my name is Chase Pipes. You're watching Chasing History, brought to you by Smoky Mountain Relic Room and Arrowheads.com. We're here at an amazing spot, probably one of the most incredible spots in American history, due to one of the most incredible coincidences in American history. So, this is Lim High Pass. And what makes this pass so special is it was here, right here, on this very spot in 1805 that Meriwether Lewis and William Clark and a band of Shoshones traversed over the mountains and down onto the western side of the Rocky Mountains. This is the Continental Divide. Literally, if I were to spill a glass of water over here, it would end up in the, last, in the Atlanta, uh, Atlantic Ocean. If I were to spill a glass of water over here, sorry Pacific, it's going in your ocean. And right here, astride the middle, is both of them. Now here's what's incredible about this coincidence is in the Lewis and Clark expedition is that the whole determination of the expedition was getting across these mountains, this very mountain, this very spot. And in order to do that, they knew that they could only take the rivers so far up the mountains. And then they would need something very important. They would need horsebacks. And the only way that they could get horses is through positive encounters with the Native American tribes. Now these Native American tribes have encountered very few white men. The only people that they've encountered are is the occasional fur trapper here and there, mostly French speaking. Um, so what happened was is that they knew that the man that was in this area were the Shoshones. And this is where Sacagawea comes in. But one of the main reasons why uh, Charbonneau, who was Sacagawea's wife and was guide on the expedition, was chosen was because of his of his wife. His wife uh, was a Shoshone. She was captured by the Mandan uh, when she was uh, just a young girl, around nine or ten years old. After she was captured uh, and adopted into the Mandan tribe, uh, she was uh, she became uh, Charbonneau's wife. So this is one of the reasons why uh, Sacagawea was chosen because this is the area that her people live right here. And Lewis and Clark knew that they needed someone that spoke their language. So when they approached this area, they hadn't seen it had been over a month since they'd seen any sign of Native American presence. And then all of a sudden, boom, they contacted the Shoshone tribe, the Shoshone's people. But here's the amazing coincidence about it is, is not only do they connect the Shoshone band, when they, I gotta set up the scene for it because it's so cool. So here's Lou, here's Lewis, here's Clark, here's Charbonneau, a handful of other people on the expedition, including Sacagawea. And they're sitting down with a group of Shoshones, uh, some of the principal leaders of, uh, of this particular band. And as they're meeting, and the, they're, the translation is going back and forth, all of a sudden, Sacagawea looks at the main uh, spokesman, the main leader of this particular band, and all of a sudden it dawns on her. And she runs over, wraps herself around him, takes her blanket, throws it over him, and just starts bawling, just starts crying. And the members of the expedition, you know, Lewis and, and Clark, are just like, what is going on? What what just happened? And they didn't realize what just happened it was the most incredible coincidence in all of American history. Because the band that they had conquered, the man that they were sitting in front of, was Sacagawea's brother. Here she was, she was taken away as a child, and here with these strange men on this on this wild expedition going west, who need to contact the native peoples in this area, who need transport of horses. And randomly, the first band that they encounter, and the spokesman for that band, is the brother of the trans of the translator, is, is Sacagawea. That is just one of the most incredible coincidences in American history. So needless to say, they got the horses. When they got the horses, it was it was such an incredible uh, uh, a moment that they named the the camp they were in Camp Fortunate, which is about uh, eight miles distance from this spot. So what they did was is is they uh, were able to purchase for trade goods a, a vast number of horses from the Shoshones. And they loaded all of their gear, all of their scientific experiments, their journals, everything onto these horses, and traversed literally, literally this spot right here. They wound up where this road goes, right here. Wound all the way up the edge, right through here, and came upon this, and came to this spot just down here. This spot right here, Slim High Pass. They came over this spot, and right down through here, down on this side, on the Pacific side of the mountain, winding all the way down the valley. All the way down the valley, and then eventually to the Pacific Ocean. And it was right here, on this spot, in 1805, 
you can see the march of time. Mayweather Lewis, William Clark, all the men of the core of the discovery, and a band of Shoshone peoples cresting this ridge on down to the other side and into American history. This is incredible. My name is Chase Pipes. You're watching Chasing History. Remember, how do you know where you're going unless you know where you've been? It's studying and understanding the mistakes of the past that we prevent the failures of the future. Follow us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. We will never, ever, ever be on Twitter. History is awesome and it's out there. You just gotta go find it. History rocks. Woohoo! Okay, let me do the, um, little. Say thank you, cameraman. Woohoo! Thank you. Do a little search around to interview of the people of the mountains and with the shiny. Um, so, an all the way view around. Well, all right. Panorama view. Pretty cool, huh? Yep. So, watch us next time. Woohoo! It's <laughs> <Italy> rocks. <laughs> That's my boy.